Now, I don't know how many of you just in your spare time or not even in your spare time, ask yourself, how old is the earth? And like, how do we determine that? Like, how, how do we figure that out? What are some techniques for figuring out the age of the earth? Well, I, scientists have been piecing this story together of the history of the earth for centuries now. Uh, and the story that is unfolding is quite clearly one of an earth that's very ancient, like billions of years. However, it, chances are, if you're a subscriber to this channel, you know that we talk about young earth creationism a lot here. And the young earth creationists are those that believe that the world is at max, maybe 10,000 years old, not billions of years old. This obviously stands in stark contrast to what the types of scientific studies I see revealed in the literature every day tell us. And what I'm doing today in this episode of Critique and Creationism, we're just going to take a look at one very recently published um, piece of research, which just adds to the thousands of examples of evidences for an ancient earth that are very difficult to understand within the context of a young earth creation. So this example comes from a recent study that shows how the earth and the Mars are connected. Yes, the, the earth and Mars have a connection with each other. They're affected by each other's gravity. Now, this might sound surprising to you that Mars can actually affect some things on Earth, like its climate. Um, but this isn't actually an unknown quantity, right? This isn't something that wasn't is, is shocking or unexpected. After all, it's astronomers who've been studying the solar system and model the positions and effects of objects on each other that have long known that Mars and Earth affect each other's motions as they travel through space. Uh, and so, the, and we even know what time scales that should occur. Right? We can back calculate where Earth and Mars were a year ago, a thousand years ago, 10,000 years ago, 100,000 years ago, a million years ago. Oh, well, actually, young Earth creationists would say, you know, beyond 10,000 years ago, it didn't exist. But nonetheless, you can replay or backtrack the tape to determine where in the universe those different objects would have been and calculate the gravitational effects on each other during those times, which can allow you to make predictions about what effects they could have on both the Earth and Mars's climate. That's exactly what astronomers have done is made these predictions. And what's really cool about this particular new paper is that uh, geologists, or geoscientists, have gone in and looked at sedimentary records and found a pattern of changing climate that matches the interval of interactions between Earth and Mars that take place over millions of years. All right, so this is just, again, another reminder of the one of, as I said before, the many studies that challenge the young Earth view and provide compelling evidence for our planet's ancient and really dynamic history. So let's get into this particular paper. Now, I'm not actually going to go through the details of this paper because this is like, like a high jargon, high math paper. And so what I've done is I've tried to summarize sort of in layman's terms, you know, what did they really find? And so in this study, deep sea hiatus record reveals orbital pacing by 2.4 million eccentricity grand cycles. Okay, right? Just Just flows off the tongue, doesn't it? Right, so let's let's talk about what these terms mean as we kind of proceed through the results of this paper. This was published in Nature Communications, which is associated with one of the, the biggest science journals in the world, Nature. Now, the authors of this paper, they have really uncovered what I think is a remarkable connection between Earth and Mars. And as I said before, astronomers already know that this connection exists in terms of, or predicted that this connection exists, but to see the actual physical effects of the connection is what's really the groundbreaking thing in this particular research. They found that gravitational interactions between these two planets have played a crucial role in shaping the patterns of deep sea sediments on Earth. So let's just dive in a little bit and figure out what exactly is it that they found and how do they know it relates to a connection, a gravitational connection between Earth and Mars. So what about these 2.4 million year eccentricity cycles? All right, so what exactly is this? Well, to put it really simply, eccentricity refers to the shape of Earth's orbit going around the sun. Now, you should probably be aware that instead of going around the sun in a perfect circle, 
our, our orbit, the Earth's orbit, is slightly elliptical, meaning it changes shape over time, right? We're, we're going around in this ellipse. And the cycle, which takes about 2.4 million years, is influenced by the gravitational pull of Mars. And what do I mean, that cycle? What is the cycle? Well, the, this ellipse is changing its shape ever so slightly and kind of warping and then going back to the original shape. And then as it moves out, right, it's kind of like, actually, you can kind of think of the ellipse as shifting where it is around the sun. And so every 2.4 million years, it comes back to the same position. And that is thought to be influenced by Mars tugging on Earth. Right When Mars tugs on the Earth, when Mars gets really close to the Earth, because Mars is also traveling around the Sun in an eccentric cycle, all right, an ellipse, right, and it is changing the shape of its ellipse, and every once in a while the two end up much closer together, millions of miles away, but nonetheless close enough that their slight gravitational attraction to each other all right, actually causes that ellipse to warp and then eventually it's going to come back to where it was before and then eventually it's going to come close to each other and then go back all right this is a 2.4 million year cycle and this can all be played out in um, dynamic models all right of the solar system in which you have these objects we know the sizes the gravitational masses and so forth and the speed at which they're going around the sun right now and you can just go back and you can see that and, and out it, you can go back in time and you can go forward in time and see that you know over the next 2.4 million years the earth is going to change this this orbital pattern uh and uh, over a 2.4 million year cycle right so these very slight subtle changes in the sunlight then are going to shift our climate pattern and our deep ocean patterns all right so the climate affects the ocean temperatures which affects the motion of the water and the ocean, which changes the actual circulation of sediments on the bottom of the sea and how sediments are deposited, right? Where they're brought in from different sources from the continents. And so it's predicted that every 2.4, well, over a 2.4 year million year cycle, you're going to end up with different sunlight patterns, which should change ever so slightly the climate of the earth and that kind of cycle. There's many other cycles that happen have to do with the the sun cycle and there's and so there's other like Milanovic uh, Milankovic cycles uh, which are on the scale of like what ten thousand years or so uh, and so those patterns are already well known but this deeper cycle is a little harder to sort of identify because it doesn't have as strong of a signal it's not expected to have as strong of a signal uh, as some of these other cycles and because of the length of the cycle. Um, you have to look at a lot of sediment profiles and collect an enormous, enormous data set in order to be able to see that signal, which is very, very slight in it. So just like one sediment column isn't going to do it. There's too much other what we call noise in that signal caused by other local events at that particular location. But when you sum up hundreds, actually thousands and thousands of deep sea sediment cores, you can get you start to see this pattern emerging of a cycle of sediment uh, a, a cycle of hiatuses, those are particular periods in which you have a stalling out, basically, of the deep sea currents. Uh, and so you have a change in the sedimentary pattern, and then it picks back up again. And so, you know, 2.4 million years later, you have another hiatus. That's where, in the title of this paper, you have deep sea hiatus record reveals orbital pacing at 2.4 million years in this eccentricity grand cycle and it's a grand cycle because because oh, it's really long and it involves two planets and their eccentric orbits wow it's pretty impressive really what they did so now there's another connection here these all these three things are connected you have uh the eccentricity you have procession and you have tilt and most simply procession is the slow wobble like a spinning top, right? It's spinning, but it's also wobbling at the same time. It's not exactly straight all the time. Uh, and the Earth is doing that too, right? It's wobbling as it travels through space. And so that's a cycle in itself. It takes a certain amount of time for that wobble to complete a complete progression. You also have the tilt of the Earth, right? And so the Earth is tilted. That's why we have you know summer and winter, depending on where we are on which side of the sun as we're traveling around the sun. 
Uh, but the tilt is changing as well. So sometimes we receive more sun or, or more even distribution of the sun across both hemispheres. And sometimes as it tilts farther away, we got a more extreme version of of the, the well, I guess you'd say a more extreme version of the summer and winter. Uh, and that has a certain cycle as well of thousands of years for that tilt to change back and forth. And so these are other patterns you're going to see, but those actually are connected to obliquity in a grand cycle. That's where you get these grand cycle things right here. Uh, and so all of that is influenced also by Mars gravitational pull. As Mars becomes closer to the Earth during certain portions of this large cycle every 2.4 million years, it's affecting those different things. Um, I know that's not terribly clear, but the, the important thing is that these are well-established sort of mathematically worked out models and predictions of how these planets are interacting with each other over these particular time periods. And now we go into the sediments and we find that we see a pattern of those sediments that match the prediction of these different cycles. All right, so just a tiny bit about the techniques and the data collection here. So how did these researchers really come to these conclusions? How did they find this 2.4 million uh, year pattern? Well, they used a method called spectral analysis of deep sea uh, hiatuses, right? So they're actually doing a scan through deep sea sediments, right? Uh, so the deep sea sediments are all the sediment that is just very, very uh, the fine sediments that are falling to the bottom of the ocean in the deep oceans, not near the continental um, shelves, right? Where you have lots of sediment being deposited from erosion and rivers deposits. This is more deeper basins. Uh, and you have a very, very, very slow, small amount of sediment laid down each year. Uh, and so you can see over, you know, meters, you can see hundreds and sometimes thousands of years of history. Uh, and by scanning through that, you can see where there's sort of breakpoints in sedimentation, where there was more sedimentation and much less sedimentation, depending on compaction and with, with creating patterns. And if that pattern has a iterative cycle to it, right, that suggests that there are uh, time periods which go through cycles where you have similar effects every so many years. Right. And that's where they're getting to this 2.4 million year hiatus where there's a specific sort of banding pattern, a, a hiatus of, of sedimentation uh, that occurs every 2.4 million years. Now, you get the 2.4 million years. Well, you also take cores and you look at sediment profiles in those cores. And what do we have? Well, we have thousands of cores taken from ocean sediments across all ocean basins on Earth now. So that's an enormous data set. And so even if one particular core might be a little messy because there might be a local environment that obscures the very faint signal, this is not expected to be a strong signal. But the advantage of having a massive data set is, of course, that you then get the opportunity to see even weak signals coming out of that data set. And that's exactly what they've done. Um, so they use this deep sea drilling projects and that are all extracted from the ocean floor. And by comparing the data with models of the Earth's and Mars orbits, the researchers could see how that gravitational interaction between the two planets influenced deep sea sediment patterns. So one of the most intriguing findings from this research is the evidence of a chaotic transition around 56 million years. I don't think I need to belabor this point too much. I mean, if there is... Uh, if this pattern, which, you know, looking at the paper, I, I certainly am convinced that this pattern exists. Um, and if this pattern exists, um, it doesn't make sense within a young Earth creationist framework. Remember, all these sediments that we're looking at are all things that would have had to have occurred after the flood. Because right? this is after the continents have all been separated, and, and young Earth creationists believe that the continents were separated and pulled apart or pushed apart very, very quickly in the latter stages of a global flood, so only 4,500 years ago. And then therefore, after that, then you had sediment deposition on top of the new oceanic crust that had formed. So that oceanic crust is formed near the end of the flood, and therefore all these sediments, which are some places thousands of feet thick, are all post-flood sediments that are deposited on this ocean floor. So if that, all that, and most of that had to have occurred within a very short time interval. In fact, they do think they were laid down very, very quickly. So how do, how do these sedimentary cycles actually get captured in a young Earth time work, framework? 
right? And why would the radiometric dates, which give us the time intervals of 2.4 million years, right? You have to date a whole bunch of these, like these d different intervals in the in the in the columns, and get the dates from many different locations. And see, like, yeah, all right, these are pretty consistent. Uh, every 2.4 million years in the radiometric dating, you see a change in the sediment profile. Uh, and so, wow, like, how would that occur in a young Earth framework? Right? Even if there was something that caused uh, some kind of cycles of sedimentation, for which I don't know what the mechanism for that would be. I've never heard of hypothesis for how that would occur. Um, even if there was that particular sedimentary pattern, why would it match the radiometric dates of 2.4 million years, which more importantly match the predictions of physics models, right? astronomical models, of just how planets are rotating around the sun and how they're interacting with each other every 2.4 million years. That's a crazy wild coincidence, right? Young Earth creationists are faced with either this is all made up data, all right? Scientists are just faking this data. Um, they're just manipulating and massaging this data somehow in order to fit these, uh, these astronomical uh, predictions. Or if the pattern's real, they have to come up with another hypothesis, some kind of hypothesis to explain within just a few hundred years how all this sediment was laid down and how it contains these patterns of cyclical deposition of sediments over time. All right, so I find these types of studies really fascinating. These are confirmations of things that have been predicted with other models from other fields of science. And that's what makes this so powerful. The combination, the, the, coal the, 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 the coalescence of multiple different fields of science with multiple different data types, all pointing toward the same thing, which is ancient patterns of sedimentation, ancient patterns of the history of planets. All right, so that's my critique of the young earth creationist model from this deep sea sediment research that was just published in Nature Communications. Hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for coming along on the ride. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.